Well, hey there. Today we're going to be making this DIY wood sign with iron-on vinyl. This project is in collaboration with Creative Fabrica. The supplies you're going to need for this project is a Cricut machine. You'll need some iron-on vinyl. You'll need an easy press and an easy press mat. You'll need a weeding tool to weed your iron-on. You may also want to have a brayer tool on hand. You will need a wood sign or some sort of blank to put your design onto. You may also want to have a ribbon on hand if you're going to hang your sign like mine. And then you're going to want to download Creative Fabrica's font that I'm going to be featuring here, as well as my watermelon design. And I'm going to link those below for you and give you more information in just a moment. All right, so this is the basic design space setup for this project. So we're going to be making this really cute Hello Summer watermelon sign. And before we get into the project, I just want to note a couple of things here. So you might be noticing this really beautiful font that I used to create the word Hello Summer for my sign. And if you're interested in downloading this font, it is currently at this time uh, free from Creative Fabrica to download. So I want to show you where to go to download that. When you're watching this video, just scroll down to the video description and hit show more if you're watching this on YouTube. And you'll find a link in there for this font. This font is called Memory. It's really pretty and it's got some really um, wonderful like glyphs and add-ons where you can get the really scrolly pretty effect here for your fonts. So make sure you create a free Creative Fabrica account and then download this free font. Now, if you're watching this video after this freebie expires, don't worry, there's a couple of different options for you um, so that you can still enjoy this beautiful font and many other fonts as well. First, I wanna bring to your attention here on Creative Fabrica that they're always giving away freebies in addition to their huge suite of graphics and fonts. So if you just come to the freebies tab here, you can find new free fonts to experiment with all the time. So feel free to do that even if you're watching this after this particular freebie has expired. Now, if you want to get this exact font and maybe you're watching this after this free one has expired, then make sure you check out Creative Fabrica's premium membership where you can get access to millions of graphics and fonts instantly and if you sign up for their um, trial period you can get access to everything for just one dollar so creative fabrica and i are constantly collaborating together this is not the first time i've talked about them because i do truly love this brand and all that they have to offer on their site and if you follow the link that's below in the video description you can get access to every single thing on their site right now for just one dollar so you can start downloading and enjoying all of these amazing fonts and graphics so make sure you check that out below again all the links to this is below in the video description we are going to be using this memory font here today and if you're watching this within the free period you can go ahead and download it and if you've never downloaded a font to your computer before and you're brand new to the concept of using um, installing fonts on your computer i'm going to have a separate video that i'll link below where you can find out more about that now, if you do know how to do that, then go ahead and just install this in your process, and then you'll be able to start using this beautiful memory font. Now, once you have installed your font, I want you to open up Cricut Design Space. And if you had Cricut Design Space open before you installed the font, make sure that you shut it down and reopen it so that the font becomes available. And I just want to show you where, oops, I want to show you where to navigate to find your system fonts. System fonts would be anything you would download from Creative Fabrica. Uh, and any font that you would install to your computer is going to be available in Cricut Design Space under system fonts. So I'm going to grab my text tool over here and I'm just going to type out the words hello summer. And of course you could change whatever you want to say as well. And I'm going to select all of that there. And I just did that by dragging my cursor or you can hit command or control A on your keyboard. Now take a look here under um, the top edit bar menu. There is a font edit bar that appears up here. And we're going to click on the font drop down right there so that we can find the font that we want. So I'm going to go over to system font right there. And we're going to type in the name of the font, which is memory. Now, if you have a different system font you're looking for, then feel free to go ahead and type that in here. Let's say you downloaded something else from Creative Fabrica. It was a different font that you liked. You may want to go ahead and then just search the name for that here as well. So I'm going to type in memory and then just hit enter on my keyboard and it's going to bring up that particular font. We're going to go ahead and click on it. <clears throat> It'll take design space a moment or two to be able to change the font. And then we're going to finalize what we're doing here. Now, how do we add these really pretty 
swashes that you see here. That's always a question. I have a more in-depth video on this. I'm going to show you the basic technique I like to use, um, which also involves using a very special tool of Creative Fabrica's, their font cloud. I absolutely love using their font cloud, and it's going to allow us to bring these, pr these pretty swashes in here. And I want you, again, to follow the link in the video description so you can know exactly where to go. But I like to use what they call is their font cloud. So this is fontcloud.creativefabrica.com. So in order to use this um, here, you'll have to create an account, of course. And then when, once you have downloaded whatever fonts, whatever system fonts you plan to install, again, there's more info on that below, um, you will just drag and drop your font files here. So browse your computer or just drag them over here so that they will now appear in your Creative Fabrica font cloud. And that way you'll be able to um, go through and preview everything. But if you want to type in a particular preview, you can just type that text in up there and then start scrolling through and find what you're looking for. So I'm going to go down to where we find the memory font and I'm going to click on the memory font. Then if you scroll down, do you see all these pretty glyph specialty characters here? This is where you can copy these out into Design Space. So I'm going to find, so I'm using an H for Hello Summer. I'm going to find my H. Notice that they go in different directions. So you'll have some that go to the left and some that go to the right, depending on if the letter is the start of the word or the end of the word. So pay attention to that just based on what your particular phrase is that you're typing out. I'm gonna grab this H right here. All you have to do is click on it and at the top, you'll see where it says character copy to clipboard. And now we know it's copied. Okay, so we're gonna come back over to Design Space now. I'm gonna double click in my text box here. I'm gonna change this to a lowercase h because that's what I'm working with. So we're gonna change that to a lowercase h. And then I'm going to use my cursor to just highlight just the h. And then we need to paste in what we just copied from Creative Fabrica's font cloud. So I'm on a Mac, so it'll be Command V to paste my item in here. If you're on a PC, do Control V to paste. So for me, it is Command V or Control V. We pasted that specialty character in there. And this is another H that they have. You can see here I used a different option. They have more than one option in this font. Um, let's go back over now and let's choose an S. So I'm gonna scroll through all of these. We want our S to be going to the left because it's the start of our word. So let's take a look. There's an S right there that's starting with the left side. So I'm gonna click on that to get the character to copy and come back over. And I'm Command V to paste it in or it can be Control V to paste in if you're on a PC. There we go. And then we would repeat the process with the O and the R if you would like to. And you can also highlight like this, and then if you right click, you can also paste that way. So if the keyboard shorthands confuse you, just right click and hit paste, and it will do the same thing. So just a little extra tip for you there. Now the next step here would be to just make our final adjustments. So this is just Cricut Design Space stuff that you would need to do. Uh, what I would do in this case here, I want to be able to move each of these words freely from each other. So with my text selected, I'm gonna click on Advanced and I'm gonna ungroup to lines so that I can move the hello freely and the summer freely from each other. When I do that, I'll be able to select each one of these as their own box now, which is very helpful to be able to bring them closer together like so. Um, additionally, let me zoom in here where you can see closer. Additionally, when you're working with these uh, cursive type of fonts here, I'm gonna change the color real quick. We wanna make sure that we're welding. So do you see, let me go in even closer. Do you see here with the word like hello, where the H is going into the E? That's actually going to cut because it has not yet been welded. We need to weld our cursive text so that it is a seamless word and it's not cutting letters apart. So it's a very important step when you're working with cursive fonts in general. Look as I click the weld button and see, look right here between the H and the E and watch the line become, um, seamless 
So I'm gonna click the weld button. You see how it became seamless right there and at the L's. So that's exactly what we want. And I'm gonna do the same thing real quick for the word summer. It's harder to see when it's dark, that's why I changed it to white, but you'll wanna click the weld tool. Okay, now we'll change these to whatever color we want. So if I'm gonna be cutting these out in vinyl, iron on vinyl, we're gonna be using iron on vinyl and wood. And um, I'm gonna change this color to like a navy. That's what I want for my particular sign. So I'm just gonna represent the color there. And then we're gonna pull this a little bit closer. Get it positioned the way you want. For really fancy fonts like this, I don't recommend using like your align tool because it generally doesn't align the way you want it to. Um, so I just like to eyeball it. So I already have mine prepped here, but I wanted to just go through the process of if you wanna you know, type everything out here in Design Space, then this is the process in which you could do that. I'm gonna go ahead and just group and hide this over here because I'm gonna proceed with the existing design that I had already set up here in Design Space. And I was just using a circle here to give myself size reference for my sign. So make sure when you're putting this onto, if you're doing a sign like I am, um, make sure to measure your sign and to make sure that your design is scaled to that appropriate size. So for me, my sign was about 11 inches and three quarters. So that is about right. And I know that this is going to um, fit on that sign because I have scaled it here. And to scale, all you do is click and drag. And at any one of these corners, you can just go up or down and scale. You can also type in dimensions up here at the top. So I'm gonna undo that so it goes back to the size I want. There we go. Now, like I said before, for this watermelon design here, you can find that below and it'll come in with a, a circle for you to help you with sizing. So if you wanna use this particular graphic, then just find that below. Um, there'll be more information on that for you. Once you've scaled things though, you don't need this circle. So I'm just gonna hide that in the layers panel using the eyeball tool. And we're gonna go ahead and cut this out. Make sure, of course, you're saving your projects. That's very important, save your projects so you don't have to do any prep like this again in the future. I'm gonna click on the Make It button and it's gonna separate everything by color. So I've got my greens, my blue, my watermelon, reddish pink color here, and my black. And we're gonna go ahead and cut this out. Now I am gonna be using iron-on vinyl on wood. So that's what we're featuring here in this tutorial. Since we're using iron-on, you wanna make sure that you have mirrored everything. So click on each of these mats and toggle the mirror button on, okay? If you are not using iron-on and you're using just a permanent vinyl, which is also very common, you do not need to mirror. You will be good to go as it is. So just take note of those two things. Let's go ahead and click the continue button. Okay, so I'm gonna be using everyday iron-on, but once again, if you're using a glitter iron-on or some other iron-on, go ahead and select that let's go ahead and load this up and assemble our craft all right so i'm going to go ahead and load up my mat here when you're working with iron on vinyl you always want to do the shiny side down so the shiny plastic liner goes here and that's why we have to mirror so that things will go the right direction when we actually go to iron them on now if you don't want to use iron on you could definitely use a permanent and, um, a permanent vinyl and in that case you will not need to mirror and you'll be able to use a transfer tape to just transfer it over to the design. I have separate videos on how to do that so I will link those below um, if it helps you as well. Alright so it can also be helpful to have a brayer tool to push the material to the mat. Mine's sticking pretty well but if you're struggling with that at all a brayer tool can really help you. I'm gonna go ahead and load my machine now. Go ahead and push the flashing go button. That will be the play icon or the cricket icon. That's the go button to proceed with the cut. All right, so this initial cut is done. I'm gonna peel my mat away from my material and we'll trim this down and then go ahead and read our vinyl. Now, all we're gonna do is repeat this for all of the colors. So I'm gonna do this with my blue, my black, my red. All right, so I'm just going to be weeding all of my designs here using my weeding tool to get it started at the corner and then pull back. All right, and then I'm just gonna use my weeding tool to get the rest of this out. All right, so there is our font. It turned out so pretty. 
Um, this is again that memory font from Creative Fabrica that we're going to be putting on our sign. So just check that you've weeded everything out and I'm just going to weed the rest of my designs here. For this project where we're using everyday iron on on our wood, your temperature is going to be 300 degrees for 40 seconds. So I'm going to press the temperature button and I'm going to make those adjustments, which is going to be 300 degrees. And then our time needs to be 40 seconds. So I'm going to click on the time icon and I'm going to increase it to 40 seconds. And now we just need to let our easy press heat up. So you would follow suit similar with the Easy Press 2. If you're using the Easy Press Mini, I would recommend the medium setting um, for this particular project. So I always like to use the medium setting as sort of a base gauge for what we're working with if you're doing the Easy Press Mini. We're gonna start with this first because it is our largest layer and it's going to sort of give us the most reference as far as like placement going forward with the rest of our pieces. So I like to sort of just shift things around and get an idea. You may want to even play with like the rest of this and be like, okay, does that, is that enough space up at the top? If I'm placing things there, it looks good for me. So I'm happy with that placement. So it's just important to sort of take a moment and get that figured out. If you struggle with centering things a lot, then you may want to consider measuring a center point with a measuring tape and marking it with a pencil that you can erase later. Okay, so I'm happy with the placement of this here. Now this is shifting around quite a lot on me. It's not really sticking to the surface. So if that happens to you, you may want a little bit of heat safe tape. So to keep things from shifting around too much on me, I'm gonna put a little bit of heat safe tape right here, just so that I don't end accidentally shift the whole design when I set things down on it. I'm gonna double check my placement there. That looks good. And what I like to do to protect my surface, because I really don't want to put the ceramic, um, the ceramic plate right onto my painted wood, I'm going to use a piece of butcher paper here just to cover it and protect it. You could also use like a reusable um, heat safe Teflon sheet or something like that, and it will also protect the surface. So I'm going to leave that right there just to protect my surface. We're going to go ahead and set our easy press on, and I'm going to hit the play icon. Might also be a Cricut icon if you're using um, an easy press two or an original and it's going to count down for us all right so this is done i'm going to go ahead and lift now our instructions for the heat guide said we need to let this um, cool before we peel so it's known as a cool peel or a cold peel what that means is you want to be able to touch this without it being hot or even warm to the touch before we peel and the reason for that is is if we try to peel it now because it's still so hot it'll probably lift the design once the design has cooled, it's had a chance to adhere to its blank and its base, and then you're gonna be able to peel it without any issues. All right, so this is cool to the touch. I'm gonna go ahead and lift this up nice and carefully. There we go. Make sure you save this liner. It's gonna come in handy in just a minute, okay? So I'm gonna set that liner aside and we're gonna move on to the next layer here. So this is my next layer and I trimmed it out kind of funky because I didn't want to waste all this vinyl here. So it's actually kind of in a half moon shape. And we're gonna go ahead and place this. And again, if things are kind of shifting around on you and, it's, and maybe the liner isn't sticking to the surface of the wood, then you could also use some of that heat safe tape again. This one's actually sticking pretty well, so I don't think I'll need the heat safe tape. I will, however, take the original liner that I have here. And I'm just going to put that down to protect that area that we just heated that much more. And then again, I'm going to take this to protect the rest of the wood. And we're gonna press again for another 40 seconds. All right, so now this layer is cooled and I'm gonna slowly remove. There we go. And as you can probably guess, we're gonna move on to the watermelon red part next and I'm going to use the top here as a guide because there's supposed to be a little space between the rind and the fruit part. All right and we're going to go ahead and press this now. All right so there is our watermelon and now we need to add on the little seeds. 
All right, so our watermelon is done. Now we just need to add on the Hello Summer and the little swashes here. So what I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna cut out this liner area where the swashes go. So I can just do this all in one press. This is an option for you. So I don't wanna have to press three times for like each of these swashes. And I'm gonna get these positioned. I'm gonna use a little heat safe tape just to hold them where I want them. And again, using some of my uncoated butcher paper to protect the design. It's really important. And we're gonna go ahead and press one last time. Okay, again, we wanna make sure this completely cools before we start lifting liners up. So just give it a little time and set it aside. All right, so here is our watermelon sign all finished, super cute. If you want, you can go ahead and put some ribbon in it depending on what sign you purchased. Mine had holes in it, so I'm gonna cut a little bit of ribbon here. And I'm gonna put these through the holes. Alright guys, so that concludes our super cute summer watermelon sign here with iron on vinyl. I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. I hope you will go and create a Creative Fabrica account, download this font, check out all their other amazing designs, freebies. Make sure you get that $1 all access for the seven days where you can download anything you want on their site for just $1. Um, so make sure you check that out. All those details are going to be below for you. Um, so make sure you check that out. I'll see you guys in the next video and this is super cute If you make this make sure you tag me because I want to be able to see your amazing craft when it is complete. Bye for now